And let me just introduce you to 90-year-old Kieran Canal, who is one of those people whose home's been damaged and is now living here among about 1,500 people. 90% uh, we're told by a senior army commander, 90% of the city of 2 million people are now living in tents like this, in parks, on the pavement, even on parade grounds, in gardens and so forth. Uh, Kieran, what happened when the earthquake struck? What did, how did you respond? What did you see? Actually, I've never seen such earthquakes in my life. I felt it very unusual. I was just, I was just watching my movie. You were watching TV when yeah. it happened? And my movie started shaking. <coughs> and I just ran away. I hold my baby up and just I went to the ground nearby and just stayed and I just saw up. I just pulled my hair up and just uh, out was uh, What did you see? When you looked up you saw the ceiling cracking. Yeah, ceiling was cracking. Not mine, but nearby the yeah. neighbors. Uh, I just went it normally went for more than four minutes. I just stayed out for half an hour. I didn't I didn't take my lunch. I just packed my lunch from the house and just took it back and had it in the ground, sir. Yeah, and now you're here, there's uh, 50, 1,000 plus people living yeah. here. What are conditions like? Yeah, I've been here for three days. Um, I personally live in mountain and I don't feel that these people are so hygienic. So I just take some precautions, preventions like I take my nucleus and all, and I'm having good. I'm having good and when do you think these people will be able to go home? Will these people go home? No, since our government is not so secure, we don't know about our future. We don't know, I, no, uh, no precautions for the earthquakes, uh, no estimations for the earthquake as well. So we're just hiding over there, just privileging our own lives. Yeah. Well, look, we, we wish you well and we appreciate you talking to you this morning. Thanks yeah. very much Thanks. to Kieran Kanal, who, uh, as he says, uh, the government really he would like to see them do more. It's an often heard lament, isn't it, in situations like this. But bear this in mind, that 93% of the buildings, we're told, in this city are not in any way remotely earthquake-proof. After the uh, Haiti earthquake, the government said, we're going to make sure we retrofit some of the buildings and make them more robust. It's not happened in many, certainly of the older parts, the poorer parts of this city, uh, where many people uh, live and have now instead moved from those districts to come and live in camps like this. Amen. Colin, when you, when you talk about um, those buildings not being uh, earthquake proof, earthquake proof and, um, and you turn up there and you see that, we can give out facts and statistics and whatever, what was it like landing there, being there, the smell, the fear, what is your feeling being there? Just getting a sense of it, Eamon. Um, but it's very easy to come into a place like this and apply a template of Western thinking, uh, which comes from a first world country. This is a developing country. Uh, people have different family bonds, they get their news from different sources. There is a sense of grave anxiety. People are, are on absolute edge. Uh, I've covered earthquakes before, and what you find with the, earth, with the aftershocks is that they just leave people perpetually on edge. They don't know when the next one's coming. They can't sleep properly. They're worried about whether their children are going to be safe. Uh, that's the all-pervasive atmosphere here in Kathmandu. But just think about this, Eamon. We're here in common with all the, those NGOs, those charities who come in, who always flock wonderfully to deal with situations like this. What we're not seeing yet, and this is the reason why the Prime Minister's warning the death toll may reach 10,000 and possibly beyond, is what we're not seeing is where the epicentre of the earthquake was in those villages which are hard to reach by the NGOs and the rescue workers. We simply don't know what's going on there. As we flew in last night, having circled for two hours ahead, so many aid flights were coming in, it was so busy. But as we came and flew in, it wasn't Haiti. You didn't see every building levelled. Enough have been levelled for sure, which is why we've got these camps. But what's happening up country, in rural areas, we could only begin to guess at, at this stage. Colin, thanks for the insight. Appreciate it. Thank you.